Everybody knows smartphones and use them almost daily. But do you know where the raw materials are coming from to produce your smartphone? In smartphones, but also other electronic devices, are a lot of metals inside like tin, copper, cobalt, or even traces of gold. But hardly anyone thinks about the consequences of mining these minerals. The tin mining industry in Indonesia is a very good example for this. Sustainability in mining covers the whole mine cycle from exploration to production to reclamation. While there has been recently an increased public debate on mining operations and their impacts, there has been not much debate on reclamation. Reclamation should play an important role in responsible mineral supply chains and certification of these supply chains. I'm standing here in the front of the Tin Mining Museum in Pangkal Pinang. Pangkal Pinang is the capital city of the Bangka Island in Indonesia. And we will learn today a few things about tin mining on this island with a long history. <laughs> Hello. 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 Nice to be here. Hello. Salamat salang. Tin mining on the Indonesian tin islands Bangka and Pelitung, southeast of Sumatra, began in the 17th century. In the colonial period, since 1858, the Dutch took over the tin mining business. In this time, the mining was expanded and modernized. In order to increase production, traditional tools were replaced by modern equipment. Today, most of the tin ore is mined offshore with stretches along the coastline of the islands. Many deposits on land are currently not economically exploitable or are already exhausted. We have here the tin mining map of South Asia, or the tin belt of South Asia called, where the most tin is mined in the world. It's getting from Myanmar down to Indonesia. And our project is located on the island of Bangka, of Indonesia, which is down here. And it's an area where the most tin is nowadays mined and it's mainly mined by the state company of PT Tima. This here is the geological map of Bangka and you can see on the map that only in the red and purple areas where the volcanic formations of granite and the Pamali complex are located in, these are the main areas where the tin ore is located on the Bangka island. The islands are small tropical paradises known for the high-quality white pepper, attractive fishing villages, a unique rainforest fauna and beautiful beaches with their impressive rock formations. Okay, we are here in the Palawan forest. It's a typical rainforest for the region of Banka. And it's famous for its trees like the Palawan trees. It's here with the red skin. And as you see, the trees are not very big in this area. They are quite small. And this is the reason is because we have a long dry season and the soil is very infertile in this area. So therefore, the trees are not like in a typical tropical um, rainforest, very big and very tall they stay quite small. All along the coastline you find the remains of the mountains of volcanic origins. These mountains are the fundament of the mineral richness of the island of Bangkok. These granite rocks are the remains of these mountains. Millions of years of intensive weathering brought down these rocks and the heavy tin minerals were sedimented along the river and in the ocean. With 
These impressive stretches nowadays tin is mined from the seabed. Besides tin, there are other metals in the sediments, the so-called rare earth metals. On land, the Pemali open pit mine is the largest still active tin mine operated by Petitima. In contrast to the mostly alluvial deposits formed by erosion and sedimentation of tin stone, this is a primary deposit where tin is found within the rocks. These deposits were created about 200 million years ago in the association with the crystallization of the granite massive on these islands. In the mine, the tin-bearing rock is separated from the overburden and transported to an intermediate storage area. The actual processing of the ore takes place in an ore processing plant elsewhere. Most of the mining on land, however, is small-scale mining. This, what you see here, is a typical small-scale mining in the area of Banka. Piditima has already mined here before, and afterwards, small-scale miners coming in to mine here again. Because what's not profitable for commercial mining is still profitable for small-scale mining. But this is all the problem about Banka. Mining is going on for years, and thus reclamation cannot start. Therefore, there are a lot of open areas in Banka causing some problems. Over the centuries, mining has left deep traces in the landscape. As a result, the soils are degraded along the rivers where the valuable minerals were mined. The bird eye's view shows the environmental disturbance which covers large areas of the islands. The lighter linear areas are current and former mining areas. Tin mining is similar to gold mining. Gravity separates the heavier tin ore from the lighter minerals such as quartz, which form the so-called tailings. Thus, mining leaves behind a moonscape of infertile soil heaps and pits filled with water. Mining can leave fascinating landscapes. Here we have an example of an ex-tin mining site where we have deep blue water surrounded by white kaolinite clay. And these contrasting colors really fascinate the tourists and they are coming here to see these lakes. Behind me, you see a typical ex-mining area. It's a very unfertile area because based on the physical separation process, only sand and gravel is left over. This kind of materials has no nutrients and no water holding capacity. So therefore, plants can very difficultly to grow here. So this is a challenge, how to improve these soils for our future generations. Heavy equipment is necessary to level the hilly X mining areas and to fill the scattered ponds so that the land can be used again. However, the problem of the infertile soil and the danger of soil erosion remains. Without soil cover, rain will wash away the remaining fine soil particles. Therefore, it is important to achieve quickly a dense vegetation cover 
and to carry out other erosion control measures such as terracing of the area. We depend on raw materials from all over the world. Or would you like to live without your smartphone or your TV? Therefore, we should support other countries with our knowledge to improve their environmental standards so that we don't buy products on the expense of the nature in these countries. At BGR, we therefore do research how to establish responsible mineral supply chains from mine to smelting to the end consumer. In Indonesia, we supported a project to gain practical experience on reclamation of former mine sites together with our Indonesian partners. The solutions we found there have been summarized in a handbook. The reclamation area consists of an agricultural part in the west and a forestry part in the east. Various tropical and local plants are tested on the pilot area. Which of these plants grow best with innovative but also pragmatic approaches to improve soil fertility. Another important aspect for sustainability is the benefit for the local population. The aim is to create a long-term source of income as an alternative for small-scale mining. This structural change is needed on the islands to end small-scale mining in the long term. Mr. Andri, mayor of the village Bukit Layang, in whose municipality the pilot area is located, greatly appreciates the reclamation project. He sees many advantages for his community. The project shows that unproductive ex-mine land can be transformed into productive land again. However, the community has to want to manage it. The municipality has committed itself with their company Bundes to manage the area and to integrate beyond agriculture, cattle breeding and fish farming on the site. On Banka, compost is very expensive. So therefore we are using an innovative technology to improve the soil fertility. We are using, on the one hand, rice husks and chicken manure to improve um, nutrient content and organic matter content of the soil. The second component is the charcoal of the palm oil industry. Both materials are very much available on the island. This material increases the soil pH and also the water holding capacity. Additionally, we are using natural soil to increase the clay content. And the combination out of these three mixtures perfectly fits as substrate for plant growth in ex-mining land. For a successful harvest, not only a fertile soil is necessary, but also enough water has to be available for plant growth. Here on the pilot side we installed an irrigation system. In the ex-mining ponds we use the water of them to irrigate the plants like we see here uh, pineapples or banana trees. Mr. Saragi from C4 Apu, the company that implemented the reclamation, shows the project team the measures on the site. There were many challenges, but the results show that the concept is successful. Hence, the area can be used sustainable by the local community and thus creates a source of income as a substitute for small-scale mining in the region. Almost all plants grow better than expected on the innovative substrate. Even we did not expect this success. We're here at the pilot site at Air Kundur 3 and it's really amazing how many um, aubergines were growing here on the site. We already 
harvested three tons of aubergines here in the last few months. In the greenhouse, the plants for the next season are already growing. In the future, additionally compost will be produced directly on site in order to guarantee sustainable land use. After the successful start of the reclamation, the area was handed over in a ceremony to the regional government. Despite the extensive measures, it will take years before the area has fully recovered its former potential. Mr. Insani, head of the Provincial Planning, Research and Development Agency, emphasizes that the pilot project demonstrates the good intentions of the Federal Government of Germany to minimize the consequences of tin mining. However, most important is sustainability. Pititima is committed to maintain the site for three years. Afterwards, the local community will continue to manage the land. Dr. Langut from the German Embassy also honored the successful cooperation between the BTR and the Indonesian Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, Pititima and the local authorities. The exemplary reclamation of the former tin mining area with the involvement of the local community and the preparation of a handbook can serve as a model for a sustainable use of resources. Pititima as operator thanks the federal government of Germany and the Indonesian Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources for the cooperation in the reclamation of the former tin mining area. Hopefully this pilot reclamation will be sustainable and will have a positive effect on the economic perspective of the community. The project shows once again how important it is to involve the local community in the process of reclamation. A new law obligates the mine operators to do more. Pititima is currently developing a master plan for this purpose. However, regulations have to be adapted so that the cultivation of maize, tomatoes, eggplants and others also counts as reclamation measures. As soon as the local population can use the area economically, they will protect the area from small-scale remining, a fate that other reclamation areas have faced frequently in the past. Petitima will now continue the reclamation process on the pilot site for the next three years and welcomes the continuing cooperation with BGR. The Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources supports this project. Even though the reclamation goes well beyond the usual scope, as vegetables and fruits are cultivated on the pilot area. Based on the current regulations, on the areas trees would have to be planted, and the success of the reclamation would be assessed on the basis of the plant cover achieved after three years. The Ministry hopes that the local population can directly benefit economically from this type of reclamation and thus assumes responsibility for the area. This approach therefore deserves attention and should be taken into account if the Ministry is reforming the regulations for reclamation. During the implementation of the project, many Indonesian experts with a great knowledge about reclamation supported us. Professor Iskander and his working group at the University of Bogor provided important input on soil and crop cultivation. They also developed the basic concept for the pilot area. Professor Sulistio and his colleagues from the University of Bandung contributed engineering and regulatory aspects as well as erosion control measures. In addition, reclamation experts and the mining company Petitima as well as governmental organization provided important input for the success of the project. With the discussions in our project workshops on Bunker, we brought these different perspectives together and jointly developed solutions on how to make reclamation of tin mining in Indonesia more sustainable. Reclamation is practiced here ensures 
that former mining areas, infertile former mining areas, can be turned into fertile land again. In Indonesia it's important thereby to include the local community for the future management of the area. Our pilot project can be a good example for other former mining areas. However, it's still a long way to go until all former mining areas are restored again. We at BGR therefore think it is important to motivate international partners to continue efforts for reclamation not only in Indonesia but also in other countries. This can help to ensure a fair and responsible supply chain of tin but also of other raw materials.